Once upon a time, there was nothing. No time, no space, no energy, no matter. Then, for reasons unknown even today, something came from nothing. Billions of years later, on a small planet called Earth, in an average solar system, in an average galaxy, there happened something that is not so ordinary. Conscious beings formed. They called themselves humans. What was so special about them? Well, they were the first organic beings living on a small planet to realize that they were organic beings living on a small planet. The humans wondered how they got there. Somehow, they had appeared into this world, and they knew of nothing else other than their conscious existence. They also realized that they would, just as mysteriously, leave this world and go back to the nothingness in which they came. Their only option was to try and figure out what the universe was and why and how it came into being. Maybe if they figured out the secrets of the universe, they would be able to understand the greater question of themselves. Many tens of thousands of years later, and we are very close to this goal. But what if all this time we have been running in circles? What if the very first assumption we made when we were born, a belief so deep in our hearts that it has become common sense by now, is actually wrong? What if we were wrong when we made the assumption that reality exists in the first place? What if reality is all an illusion? You would think that that is impossible. If reality is an illusion, then how am I right here, right now? The problem is that you, like the rest of the universe, would also be simulated, so that there would be no distinction between anything real or not real, because we only experience reality as consciousness, which can be simulated. Today, let's talk about the daunting possibility of reality being an illusion, and us being in it. Part 1. Simulation Theory we will start with what everyone usually thinks of when they think of reality being simulated. Simulation theory. What is simulation theory? It's the newly popular idea that reality is but a simulation, usually by a computer. Imagine that in the far future, eons from now, a civilization that is big enough to inhabit their galaxy is able to build a computer that is so powerful that it is able to simulate consciousness itself. Now, to build a computer this powerful, you'd require so much energy that you might need to build it around the star. But let's assume the civilization of advanced beings can achieve that with ease. But how can consciousness be simulated? You may think that it is impossible to simulate something as mysterious and metaphysical as consciousness, but it can be done with some difficulty. To learn more about consciousness, you can watch my previous video. Eventually, a very advanced civilization can actually create a near-perfect simulation of reality. So much so that the beings inside of it would have absolutely no clue. So, what if our reality is being simulated? What if everything we touch, taste, sense, or feel is all a simulation, and we are just brains in jars, being electrically stimulated to feel a reality that is merely an illusion? This is, in fact, one way that many physicists try to explain reality. When asked, they just say that we are being simulated. However, Simulation theory does not solve the issue of the fundamental nature of reality, because the civilization that is simulating us will have to be almost identical to our own civilization, and have almost an identical universe with the same fine constants. If so, then we are right back to the question of what is the fundamental nature of their reality? So simulation theory does not solve much, but just proposes we could be simulated by a similar civilization to our own if our civilization does exist in the first place. However, you don't need a computer to simulate reality. What if, instead, we're being simulated by the universe itself? Part 2. The Question of Determinism Time, the fourth dimension, is one of the most confusing topics today, and how it functions can lead you to a new idea of how we can be simulated. Back in the 20th century, physicists were trying to figure out how time works. The big question was whether the future was already determined or not. I'll tell you what this means. If the future was already determined, then everything, including your own life, would be played out like a movie. If in the future you will die in a car accident at the age of 52, then nothing you can do now would change that destiny. It would be sealed in stone. Likewise, you would have no free will. Everything you do and have ever done would have already happened, and you'll just be living it like an actor acting out a pre-written play. This is called determinism, and it is another way that you could be simulated without knowing it, this time by time itself. This is what scientists thought time was like until they peered into the quantum world. 
In quantum mechanics, reality is actually non-deterministic. What does this mean? It means that any moment other than now is not sealed in stone. Quite the contrary, it exists only as probability. For example, tomorrow for breakfast you currently have a 50% chance of eating toast, a 50% chance of eating cereal, etc. And this gave rise to a new theory known as many worlds. In many worlds, every action you do creates a parallel universe world line for whatever you didn't do. A world line is any possible path that a universe can take from Alpha, the Big Bang, to Omega, the Big Rip. For example, if you ended up having cereal for breakfast, then the world line where you had cereal becomes our universe, and the one where you had toast becomes a different one. Of course, our universe doesn't actually split in two whenever you decide you want some cereal. Rather, the world line splits in two, but only one of those two outcomes is actually selected and becomes the truth. This creates a massive universal probability field within the set of all possible states that every universe goes through from birth to death. In one parallel many worlds universe, everything will be different except maybe you had toast instead of cereal. While in others, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs missed and dinosaurs are still here in the 21st century. The only way to access these other worlds is through the sixth dimension. Next up, what if you could be simulated by yourself? This is the scary philosophy of solipsism, where everything other than you yourself doesn't actually exist. Part 3. You are the universe. What are you? What makes you yourself? Most people would say maybe their personality, character, or state of mind. But what do all of these have in common? They are all part of consciousness, the ability to be self-aware of you and your surroundings. But why are you yourself? Why aren't you me or anyone else? You can be sure that you are conscious of yourself. After all, you are here to tell the story. But can you be sure that anyone else is conscious of themselves? I mean, you can't look into their brain to see if they are conscious or anything. So what if you are the only conscious person in the entire universe and everyone else is just an illusion? This is called solipsism, regarded as one of the scariest philosophies ever. If this philosophy was actually proved to be true, then you would be you because nobody else would ever exist. The entire universe would literally revolve around you. Everything and everyone else would be fictional, a figment of your imagination. You would be a conscious being living in a dark and empty matrix, and you would never even know it. So how do we know whether this is true or not? The problem is, we don't. Since we can't peer into each other's minds, there is no way of knowing if all of us are indeed conscious. I could be simulated by you. You could be simulated by me. However, I don't think that solipsism is the right way of explaining reality. To me, just the fact that solipsism exists proves it wrong, because that means other people believe it, not just me. So if they are conscious and I am conscious, then what does that mean? That most likely, everyone is conscious. Why then can I only experience my own consciousness and not anyone else's? Well, to me the problem of mass consciousness can be thought of as made up of many different planes. Every person's consciousness exists on its own, separate, isolated plane. We are born, we live, and then we die, and our plane disappears. And why can't we experience anybody else's planes? The simple answer is that consciousness as we know it cannot communicate telepathically. Consciousness is emergent from the brain, and because the brain is not advanced enough yet to communicate telepathically, we just can't do it. But just because your plane is isolated doesn't mean it's the only one that exists. Next up, what if the entire universe existed as an illusion, even if there was nothing to simulate it? Sounds crazy? Well, this idea is harder to disprove than you might ever imagine. Part 4. Objective or Subjective? While well, the main point of physics and science altogether is to find out how our universe functions, there is a problem that puts all of that into consideration. Does our universe even exist in the first place, even if there is nothing that is simulating it? That may seem like an easy question. I mean, how could our universe not exist if we are here to tell the story? Surprisingly, however, the question of our universe being either objective or subjective, real or non-existent, has stood the test of time, has become one of the greatest philosophical questions ever. But why? Surely our universe has to exist. Well, there is proof on both sides. 
First of all, let's look at some reasons why reality could be objective, meaning we do exist. In order to exist, our universe has to be created from nothing. But how does something come from nothing? Did God do it? Well, not quite. Instead, what did it is a process called quantum creation, which today is the most widely accepted explanation for something coming from nothing without the need of God. I explained it in full detail in one of my previous videos, From the Nothing to the Nothing, but basically, quantum creation states that if you had two particles which have an opposite amount of energy, like a matter particle with its antiparticle counterpart, then you can create the two out of nothing without violating the first law of thermodynamics. How? Well, since the two are opposite, their charges cancel out and equal zero. And if you can do that with particles, you can do that with entire universes. Next, what about the proof for reality being subjective? Well, the proof is in quantum mechanics, the most correct theory in all of physics. We've always known that in quantum mechanics, everything behaves like probability and doesn't physically exist the way things do in our regular macroscopic world. Now, however, we might be forced to accept the conclusion that nothing exists in the first place. As I said in my last video, there has been a recent experiment, link in the description, that shows that there's no such thing as an objective reality. It's too complex to explain in this video alone, but this experiment proves that two observers can experience different, conflicting realities when observing the same particle, proving that reality might be subjective and be an illusion after all. So which is right? Well, I have an answer to that. Part 5. A Mathematical Universe Is our universe objective or subjective? Does it even exist? This deep question has stood the test of time for many thousands of years. And finally, I have found an answer. Let's think about it. What is reality? Well, reality is only what we, as conscious beings, consciously perceive it to be. So is consciousness reality? Actually, the answer is no. Because in order for our consciousness to create a visualization of reality, there must be something stimulating it. For example, vision requires light to stimulate the eye in order to see anything. So the true reality has no color or sound or taste or anything because all of those things are emergent properties. That rules out consciousness as simulating our reality then. Reality is not exactly what we think it is, but it is still there. It still exists, right? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. See, our universe is made up of particles, which are made up of energy via the equation E equals mc squared. And even energy has to be made out of something, which I believe is information. I assume that it is mathematical information, because since mathematics describes our universe so well, it would make sense that it is what reality is fundamentally made of. Mathematics is based on probability. Without it, nothing would ever happen. Now, let's assume that tomorrow for breakfast, you again have two choices, cereal or toast, and just as before, there's a 50-50 chance of you having one or the other. At this point, both outcomes are in superposition, meaning none of them will become real until you make the decision. Now, let's suppose that you were a human being that was living inside one of the outcomes that hasn't been chosen yet, and is still in superposition. We all know that that particular universe until you make the decision to either of toast or cereal, exists only as probability wave, and is subjective. So the question is, would that human being inside that universe that is subjective experience his reality to be real or not? Listen, as I said earlier, reality is most likely made of mathematical information. Mathematics is governed by probability. Probability is what makes things function. Without probability, you don't have mathematics. So by that logic, our universe has to be made up of probability. But the same thing is true for the person who is living in the subjective universe. So, it doesn't matter if reality is objective or subjective, because they're the same thing! Let that sink in for a moment. If reality is objective, it's made up of mathematical information, which is probability. If reality is subjective, it's also made up of probability. So existing and non-existing is one and the same at the deepest level of reality. That must be the reason why there was indisputable proof on both sides, objective and subjective, because they are both correct. Our reality is both objective and subjective. They mean the same thing. Any physical object, like a banana, is only defined as a cluster of mathematical information that comes together to appear as a banana for any observer. Therefore, 
Any simulation of reality and reality itself are the same thing at the most fundamental level of reality. There are two ways of going about this. Either you assume that reality is an illusion and nothing truly exists, or you assume that our universe exists and also every other possible universe within the infinite multiverse, because possibility is ultimately what governs reality. Ultimately, imagining is creating. So something never did come from nothing, because nothing existed in the first place. Our universe and the entire multiverse are all simply part of nothing, and always will be. As Robert Kaplan said, if you look at zero, you will see nothing. But look through it, and you will see the world. Part 6. The Timeless Perspective In the end, probability is ultimately what reality is made of. Any possible universe exists as real as our own. At the deepest level, reality is purely and beautifully mathematical, and is part of a probability wave we call the many worlds. If you sum together all possible universes, you get Omega, the infinite multiverse, which is like the one that all probability sums to. It exists, and yet it also doesn't. It is everything, and yet it is also nothing. So in a way, religion has technically been right all along. It turns out that there is an infinitely powerful point that our universe is contained within. Every possible mathematical probability exists within this point, making it look like nothing externally, but actually having infinite complexity internally. Our universe moves along the arrow of time, which is actually an illusion, by the two orders, which dictate how our universe will return to the timeless state of Omega. And within that Omega state, there are infinitely many universes that also exist as probability like our own. So there must be at least one universe within the infinite multiverse that contains life. Since life as we know it only experiences reality from four dimensions and is conscious of itself, it is inevitable that Omega will, in turn, also become that life. So in the end, we humans and all of life are fractions of Omega, and when we die it is like being out back together as the timeless whole. We are all Omega, but we just don't know it yet. The purpose of life, then, is to realize this fact, and to enjoy the knowledge of the existence of Omega, the infinite multiverse, while we still can. Amen. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. As always, this video was made by Alexander Rafel, and edited by Samuel Rafel and Bhavani Gopal Krishna. The concepts presented in this video were based on the amazing book, Everything Forever, Learning to See Timelessness by Gavin Giorban. As always, if you want more amazing and groundbreaking ideas about timelessness, existence, and the true nature of reality, please visit everythingforever.com or buy Everything Forever, Learning to See Timelessness by Gavin Jorben. Thank you for your support, and be sure to subscribe and like this video.